Hello Year 8, welcome to our continuation of uh, looking at characters from Dickens. I don't know about you, but I'm thoroughly enjoying this uh, module. Miss Payton put this one together and I think it's rather fantastic. Anyway, this one just gives us a bit of an overview before we start. The Gargaries versus the Cratchits. Mrs Joe was in a cross temper. It will mean more to you as the lesson goes on. Don't worry about that, just uh, have a look at it and go on to the next slide. Your, uh, your do now, just for five minutes, is what qualities do you think you need to be a good parent or carer? Just make a, a list there for five minutes. Um, and today we're going to be looking at the difference, differences between the Gargaries and the Cratchits, both uh, family units from Dickens. Do you remember the Cratchits from uh, A Christmas Carol a few lessons ago? We're going to meet the Gargaries today and we're going to look at the differences between them and how those differences are shown to the reader. So put that title into your books, The Gargaries versus The Cratchits. As usual, a quick reminder of what it is you need today, because I won't be able to stalk around the classroom and make sure you've got it all. Um, you need a pen, pencil and a highlighter, a PDF copy of The Great Expectations Extract and um, your exercise book. I'll attach obviously the extract to class charts. And uh, here's my response to the do now. I wonder how many of these you've got that I've got. What, care, what qualities do you need to be a good parent or carer? You need to be kind, caring, loving, patient, supportive, encouraging, forgiving, reliable, able to set boundaries and a good role model. I wonder if you had anyone, any different ones to those. Right, Pip, who you may remember, or I hope you remember, as the young man who met Magwitch down on the uh, marshes in Sheppey there. Um, he lives with his sister, Mrs. Joe, and her husband, Joe Gargery. Mrs. Joe is more than 20 years older than Pip, despite that she is his sister, an age gap which would not have been that uncommon in Victorian times as, as uh, people had such large families. The reader first meets the Gargaries in Chapter 2 of Great Expectation when Pip returns home from his first meeting with Magwitch. Now your task is to read the extract from Great Expectations that I've attached and answer the following questions, supporting your points with quotations. What kind of a father figure is Joe? So it's a peel paragraph, isn't it? You don't need to worry too much about the link actually, but you can link back to the question if you want. You want the point, the evidence and the analysis. So what kind of a father figure is Joe? What kind of a mother figure is Mrs. Joe? Because she's his sister, but in effect she's his, she has a role of, the role of his mother. And how would the reader react to Pip in this extract? What does the read a feel about what Pip's going through there. So that's 15 minutes to do that, Year 8. And here's, uh, here's the ones that, uh, that I've come up with. Joe and Pip have a very close relationship. They are fellow sufferers at the hands of Mrs Joe and share confidences together. Joe clearly loves Pip and stands between Pip and his wife to stop her beating him. Joe clearly has, has the caring, protective instincts of a father. However, Pip, Pip does not see him as an authority figure but as a larger species of child and as no more than his equal. What kind of mother figure is Mrs. Joe? Mrs. Joe is an appalling parental figure. She regularly beats Pip with a tickler, uh, a wax-ended piece of cane, and deeply resents having had to bring him up. I've never had this apron off since you I've never had this apron of mine off since born you were. How would the reader react to Pip in this extract? The reader would feel great sympathy for Pip in this extract. He is clearly frightened of his sister and is physically hurt by her in this extract, crying and rubbing myself. The reader has already seen Pip threatened by Magwitch and now we see that he is treated cruelly in his own home as well. So we can see what a bleak life it is that Pip's leading. Anyway, you should have three paragraphs uh, not unlike those three. Now, a couple of weeks ago, or a week and a half ago, we studied the role of the Cratchit family when the ghost of Christmas present took Scrooge to visit them. Now, your task is to look at this picture carefully and note down how the Cratchit family are portrayed and how Scrooge might feel looking at this family scene. So we'll start on the, uh, on the left there and go clockwise round. The room is dull and bare, showing the family have little money, but they are dressed in their finest clothes, showing how happy they are to celebrate. Scrooge might feel isolated and excluded from the celebration. He may feel guilt at his, at, as he sees his clerk in his role as a father rather than just as an expendable employee. Bob is a loving father, putting his arms around his two youngest sons. The family are smiling, enjoying the celebration and spending time together. 
Now we're going to read through uh, the extract and then you're going to make notes on the way Dickens uses language and structure. I'll be a bit more specific about that when I've read it. What has ever got your precious father then, said Mrs Cratchit, and your brother, Tiny Tim, and Martha weren't as late as last Christmas Day by half an hour? Here's Martha, mother, mother said a girl, appearing as she spoke. Here's Martha, mother, cried the two young Cratchits. Hurrah, there's such a goose, Martha. Why, bless your heart alive, my dear. How late you are, said Mrs Cratchit, kissing her a dozen times and taking off her shawl and bonnet off her with, for her with officious zeal. We had a deal of work to finish up last night, replied the girl, and had to clear it away this morning, mother. Well, never mind, as long as you are come, said Mrs Cratchit. Sit ye down before the fire, my dear, and have a warm, Lord bless you. No, no, there's father coming, cried the two young Cratchits, who are everywhere at once. Hide, Martha, hide. So Martha hid herself, and in came little Bob, the father, with at least three feet of comforter exclusive of the fringe, hanging down before him, and his threadbare clothes darned up and brushed to look seasonable, and Tiny Tim upon his shoulder. Alas, for Tiny Tim, he bore a little crutch, and had his limbs supported by an iron frame. Why, where's your Martha? Where's our Martha? cried Bob Cratchit, looking around. Not coming, said Mrs Cratchit. Not coming, said Bob, with a sudden declension in his high spirits, for he had been Tim's blood horse all the way from church, and had come home rampant. Not coming upon Christmas Day? Martha didn't like to see him disappointed. It were only, it were only in joke, so she came out prematurely from behind the closet door and ran into his arms, while the two young Cratchits hustled Tiny Tim and bore him off into the wash house, that you might hear the pudding singing in the copper. So your question is, this is an extract we looked at a week or two ago, how are family presented? Make notes on the way Dickens uses language and structure. So go through, find the two ways um, at least that uh, language has been used um, to present them and two ways structure has been used to present them and they've been presented as a loving family. So you could say, you could start off, uh, the, uh, the Cratchits are presented here as a loving and warm family. Um, and then talk, then get a quote, then do your analysis, then talk about some structure, and then get another quote, talk about some language, then talk about some more structure. So two bits of structure, two bits of language, 15 minutes, then on to the next slide. Here's some annotations that I've done. I won't uh, read them all out, but you can stop the presentation there or the video there or however it is that you're looking at it and, uh, and see uh, what I've done there. Your task and the task that I want you to do and uh, upload onto class charts for me to have a look at. And as ever, I've been really impressed with the work that I'm getting. So keep it coming. I want you to write a paragraph comparing how Dickens presents the Gargaries and the Cratchits differently. You need to support your ideas with analysed quotations and consider how the reader would react to the, to, uh, the two families different, uh, dif di differently. Um, Here's a sort of writing frame that you can use. And I would advise you to use this, actually. Fill this in, write it down into your books and fill it in. And then um, you use it to write your paragraph. So look at the top there. The Gargary family unit is, what is it? Well, it's kind of unusual. It's made up of Pip's um, older sister and her husband. And it's, um, you know, Pip's, uh, uh, Mrs. Um, his older sister's husband spends a lot of time defending him. Uh, Mrs. Joe is um, horrible to, uh, there you go, look, Mrs. Joe is horrible to Pip, she beats him, for example, in a quotation, this quotation reveals that, you know, she's a very unhappy woman, and then uh, and then you, you go through, and you can use that writing frame, so just, you can copy that down and fill in the blanks, okay, uh, that's the task I want you to see uploaded onto, I want to see uploaded onto class charts. And well done and thank you. I look forward to receiving your work. Um, it's been brilliant so far, uh, so keep it coming. I'm going to have a big old blitz at some point um, early, this probably tomorrow. This is this was recorded a week ago, though. Um, and so you should have had uh, some feedback and all your lessons by the time you get to this. There you are, year eight. Well done. Thank you. I'll speak to you next time.